Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry. This video is going to be my first summoning session on the new Lost Hero Summon Showcase. I have been loving the event so far. If we have time during summoning, I'll give you my impressions on that. Otherwise, toward the start of next week, I will put together a guide and kind of an overview once I have a better handle on all of the aspects of the event. For now, it is all brand new to me. I have been enjoying using Alphonse very much so far. Do try to upgrade him. There are some endeavors for that. Try to get his mana circles up to 40 or a little bit lower perhaps. I'm not sure the exact number. You can check that yourself on your endeavors tab and this can be kind of your guide for what you want to do as far as progress in the event. But for doing that, you are going to get a Champion's Testament, which you can then use to power him up further or any 5-star character up further. And you're also going to get one of those from challenging and defeating his trial, which is a really fun challenge for more experienced players. So we're not here to talk about the event, but rather the Summon Showcase. And this is kind of breaking a couple of my cardinal rules as far as summoning, because there are two pieces of advice that I tend to give out to all Dragalia Lost players. The first is, remember that you can always wait to summon. You don't have to summon at the beginning of a showcase, you can wait until the end, and by waiting until toward the end, you usually get a preview, a trailer of what's coming up next, and if you pull at that point, you have more information to make a better decision. So that's rule number one. Rule number two that I'm breaking here is, I always say, don't chase after five stars. I've done it a couple of times, I've broken that rule before. I have gotten burnt by breaking that rule before as well, especially on Galas. So for five star adventurers, even though we have this change to the summoning pool and we only have dragons and adventurers, they will be easier to snipe and easier to get. I'm not sure how much easier, I haven't done the math on this, so that I don't know. However, it is still a pretty low appearance rate, and especially because all of them are on focus, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you're summoning, so if you really want one of these characters, just be careful. Be careful and be aware of that. If you're somebody who doesn't care about Fire Emblem at all, honestly, the fact that there's no featured four stars here, maybe you want to skip this banner just because four stars are pretty reliable as far as targets go. So as far as the analysis, the only thing I want to add briefly as to what I said yesterday, because yesterday I was really hyped and really excited for these, and now hopefully this will be a little more level-headed, is when I think about it, these last abilities, and a lot of y'all pointed out this in the comments, last abilities being one use are not as good as I might have been exclaiming them to be. I do feel like the kits on these characters are actually pretty simple and very beginner-friendly, and a last ability like this is actually very beginner-friendly too, because... When you're learning the mechanics, you know, even as an enfranchised player, I make a lot of mistakes and I get hit sometimes. When you're first starting off, learning how to four strike, learning how to dodge and move around, you know, that might happen. And just because you have lower stats, you might fall to that lower HP. And that's actually very friendly to beginners. For more experienced players, though, the application that so many of you commented was high dragons. In high dragon fights, you take an opening blast it deals a lot of damage, and depending on how you build your character, it might be enough damage to leave you with only 30% HP left, meaning you could reliably trigger these to begin the quest. The other thing about High Dragons pertains to Fjorm. As it turns out, her Ice Mirror can be used against those opening attacks. So for High Brunhilde, this can basically absorb that damage and then deal out like 30,000 damage from Fjorm's Ice Mirror, since she has skill prep of 100%, that is more relevant than I thought on her. So that's all I really want to say about that. You know, when I look at these characters, Flame Sword, everybody gets that in Yudin, Water Lance, everybody gets that in Elisan, and so in some ways I feel like Veronica is kind of the most unique and most valuable here, but getting Fjorm or Marth, because they are at least Marth is more powerful than his Dragalia counterpart of Yudin, it is going to make your life easier if you're a new player, and if you just like these characters, 
it's worth it to summon. And that's the reason I'm summoning is I just like these characters. I want to see if I can get at least one of them. I'm probably not going to spend more than 12,000 Wormite today. That is how much it would take to guarantee you get a 5 star because after 100 summons, if you didn't get a 5 star, it is guaranteed. And it shouldn't take that long, but you never know. So that's how much I am prepared to spend if we have to. I am looking at this Platinum Showcase and maybe considering summoning on this. The thing is, you don't know which of the three you're going to get, and it is possible to get a duplicate if you summon from this first and already pull one of them. So do keep that in mind if you are not aware of that. And if you want to pull on that, you need 1,200 Diamantium. The cheapest way to get Diamantium is this Beginner's Pack. You get 1500 for $8, but I've already purchased that. It's a one-time purchase. So if I wanted to get that Platinum, I'd be looking at maybe, you know, combining a Storage Pack and this Limited Time Champions Pack with, like, a Diamantium purchase for a dollar, 75 Diamantium. So the cheapest I could probably get this for, having bought that one Beginner Pack already would be like $15 for a guaranteed 5-star and a full 10-fold summon. So it's weighing on my mind. I'm considering it. I'm not necessarily going to do it, though. It's going to depend on what we summon today. And last thing I'll say, I know I keep saying that, you know, remember, one of these 10-folds I have was from my dream summon for Nefaria. So technically, this first summon that we're going to do today is not a free-to-play summon, and the rest of them will be. So, let's see what we get. It's been a while since I summoned in this game. I went all out for Forest Bonds, then had to skip Last Banner afterward. It's gonna be weird not seeing Worm Prince here, but I'm kind of... That's another reason I kind of want to summon, is just to see what it feels like now. So we're gonna get an Axe, a Dragon, and another Dragon. I wonder what that Golden Axe could be. I'm trying to think. Pretty sure I have all the 4-star Axes. So most likely, this circle is just going to involve a bunch of Eldwater. But if you're new to the game, you know, now you get to enjoy basically a full circle of new characters and new dragons without getting any Worm Prince. So that has got to be pretty sweet. I'm sure if, you know, you just started off and you're summoning right away, you're getting more characters than you know what to do with by summoning. It looks like we got Karina. She is an awesome four-star axe. Made a spotlight about her. And of course, I want to make another spotlight. I had one planned for a particular character who gets revealed in the story. However, I am going to probably do one for Alphonse first instead, since everybody has Alphonse. And I want to talk about his kit and how to build him. So nothing really from this circle other than Eldwater. Since I already have a maxed out Silk and a maxed out Strabog, those are also just going to be sold or parted ways with for Eldwater as well. But all that Eldwater can be put toward Worm France. And by this point, by the time uh, you're watching this, I had already recorded my Worm Print guide, so hopefully that was helpful to you. If you have any questions on that, feel free to leave a comment. I'm going to do my best to get back to responding to comments. Life has been kind of busy lately, kind of hectic, and that is one thing that has definitely slipped through. And I am still reading the comments, but sometimes I'm not able to respond to all of them. So I hope that I can continue to do a better job at that. And if you really have a question, another way you can get it answered for sure is to stop by the Discord. We have some helpers, mods, there's all sorts of helpful people there. So of course the link for that is in the description below if you want to join us. And you can also play co-op there. We've kind of reorganized it. Tried to make matchmaking a little bit smoother and more convenient for people since it's fun to play with people you're friends with and people you get to know. Here we got basically the bare minimum amount of Eldwater because this circle only had one four star, but hey, it's at least more Eldwater than we were getting before the change. So hopefully we can get a five star. We should get one. Yeah, I was going to say this should pretty much be around when we break our pity rate. I wonder what it's going to be, though, and it's going to be one. All right, let's see if it's one of the characters. It's a Lance. It's a Lance, so that could be Fjorm. And actually, actually, I don't have any of the five-star Lances in the normal summoning pool because I don't have Zanefried and, yeah, I don't have Annalie. I only have Halloween El San, and she was uh, Halloween exclusive. So it's either going to be Fjorm or it is Fjorm. It is Fjorm. 
Nice, we got our first Fire Emblem character and only three tenfolds in. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. I can't wait to check her out. Rest of this, I'm guessing, is just going to be Eldswater. With how many of these three-star cute baby dragons we get now, I might actually max unbind all of them. No way! I forgot about Yue! When we saw that axe earlier, I said I think I had all the axes. I forgot they just added Yue on Silas's banner. So we have two things to look at. I guess I'll start with her since she was last to be summoned. Let's take a look at her 3D model. You used to be able to twirl it around, but now you can't. But she still looks really good. I love her haircut. It looks really cute in the model, actually. As far as details go, UA's first skill, when you upgrade this, it can stun enemies. One of the most powerful status afflictions to affect an enemy, unfortunately not all enemies can be stunned because it is so powerful. And then Wild Instinct activates Wild Child. Basically, this is a personal buff which enhances her critical rate and puts her into a Berserker mode where every time she deals damage, she heals herself, but her defenses are significantly lower. So I love, I mean, I just love this mechanic because it's so novel as far as what else is in the game. Um, so I think that's really cool. And now with the chains, you know, this can go up to 15, her defense co-ability. Last defense of 50%, sleep res of 50%. This will go up to 100, this will go up to 60. And then recovery potency she gets when promoted. I am pretty happy to get her and actually check out her story because I haven't done that yet. Here we go. We can turn around and look at her model. It's nice that she has, I guess this is like a leopard or, you know, maybe a saber tooth pelt. She has a really nice model. It's cute. Awesome. And now let's check out Fjorm. So Yue was just introduced, so even if you're an existing player, we don't really know a lot about her or her story unless you summoned her. Fjorm looks so good. This has got to be some of the best artwork of her. There she is, doing her little bob. Let's look at details. Frigid Smash can freeze enemies. That's another powerful condition, just like Stun. And then Ice Mirror. I didn't really understand fully how this works, but from what I can tell, you still take damage from an attack, so it's not necessarily an iframe. Normally when you cast a skill over a red area of effect, you get an invulnerability frame and you don't take damage. This, you still take damage, but based on the amount you take, you deal out more damage to the enemy. And it has some kind of super armor properties because it can stop those high dragon opening blasts so, in some sense, compared to other skills, other skills get interrupted by that. This has some special properties. I'm not sure if it can block purples. I haven't tested that out yet because I just got Fjorm. It's the first day. She is going to be good against High Brunhilde in the endgame because of that. Although, you know, if you're worried about that or you're thinking about that really early as a new player, Elisan is still going to be really good. Elisan is still incredible, especially now that she can get 100% burn res. So Fjorm's not necessary, but she is really awesome. Really good pull for us. All right, so now we have to make a decision about whether we should keep summoning. We got all of that just from our vouchers, so we haven't spent our Wormite yet. I'm gonna take a break for a minute, go ahead and level up my Fjorm and my Yue. Let's see if we have enough crystals to fully level them since I've gotten a lot from dailies and haven't gotten new characters in a while now. And I guess we could keep going, you know, we could see if we get lucky and get Marth or Veronica. Those two are probably the ones I was most excited about, you know, if I had to say. So maybe I will keep going, even though I don't really need anything from the showcase. It would be awesome to pick them up if I can and have a complete collection if that's even possible. Even if we already get two, you know, I don't think this will come back for a long time. So instead of filling out their mana circles right now, let's go back in, let's do it. It's a weird sensation. It's a weird sensation pulling with no worm prints at all. Let's see what we get here. We're gonna get a four star. That is guaranteed, of course, but we're gonna get two of them. Maybe we'll be able to pick up some Ifrit or Ifrits because that is the one four-star dragon who I'm really lacking. 
looks like we are going to get two dragons, and in my case, since I have all of the three-star adventurers, I'm just going to kind of skip through this part. The three-star dragons are not really worth it, you guys, if you're new, compared to the free story dragons you get by playing the campaign. Those are generally going to be better, but four-star dragons from the gacha are good. They're better than welfare dragons that you get from the story. And speak of the devil, we actually did get him. And we also got a Poliahu for Eldwater. But that is pretty good to me. That means we're one step closer to Max Unbind. I think we need still two more, but we could get these through the treasure trade through Void Battles next month. So let's do our next tenfold. I hope that all of you out there were able to get something good if you decided to pull on this showcase. And I'm very curious what your experience is like without worm prints in the summoning pool. Like, does it feel better to you? Does it feel worse to you for some reason? Here we're gonna get two swords, so there is a chance we could get Odetta. I am missing Odetta. We got Kuhai on the first one. Odetta would be amazing. And I'm missing Carl. Carl would also be amazing. It's possible we're gonna get dupes though. I have the other swords. So many cute adventurers, so many stories to read. If you are new to this game, just take your time, there's no rush. We did get Carl, so as you can see, I'm still getting new adventurers, even after about seven months of playing. It's a rare treat, but I don't know, I feel pretty good about it. Before this change, I honestly felt pretty down on summoning, and that was reflected in my worm print summoning video, where I was going all out just to get a worm print, which worm prints are normally what people want to avoid. Now I feel pretty good about it, even though this is just a Carl. There's also a lot of Eldwater. You can see I got a pretty big refund of Eldwater. I got over 200,000, I want to say. Let's take a look at Carl, though. Carl's a good adventurer, too. One of those adventurers who has a cat in the artwork. Be on the lookout for that. That happens more often than you might think. I like that he has these uh, red tips. Must be, uh, you know... Stylist is the same as Alphonse with the frosted tips or the flaming tips in Carl's case. Vanquishing Flame, I believe, has a secondary effect, but I'm not sure what it is. My hunch, this is completely baseless. We have to promote him or not promote him, upgrade him, level him up, level up his skill to see what this does. But my hunch is this reduces enemy strength, but I don't remember. Soul Ignition increases the entire team strength. That is very good for Carl. Carl also becomes stronger for the more enemies he defeats. Very similar to Navid. Navid is a 5 star sleep res flame sword who has both of these first two skills. But then Carl's final skill does differentiate him, or abilities, I keep calling these skills. His final ability does differentiate him somewhat. This is a pretty powerful ability. It's a large amount of strength on a passive. So Carl is uh, Carl's the big boy of justice in this game. That's one way of uh, describing him. That is actually a real weapon name, believe it or not, but sadly, it is not a sword. It is actually a dagger. So this time, it's looking like it's going to take us more than three tenfolds to break our pity rate and get a five star. What is it going to be, this circle? We're going to get a dragon, a dragon, and a lance. Now, I can't think of any lances I don't already have, so we'll go through this pretty quickly see what we get. It is a little bit sad to me that they didn't add any dragons from Fire Emblem. That would have been awesome. I mean, there are some really great dragons, and even just someone like Tiki, that was my hope, that there would be somebody else to play off of Marth. And I thought that Tiki would have been a really good representative, young Tiki. We're gonna get Ryozen as a duplicate, so we'll do another tenfold. Other than that, though, I mean... I guess they could have gone with a legendary dragon or mythic dragon like Naga or something, but that might be too far and not necessarily recognizable. Here we are going to get a five star. Let's see what it's going to be. I hope it's one of the new characters. It's a sword. Oh my gosh. It could be Marth. It could be Marth, you guys, but I already have two five star swords. I have Naveed and I have Xander, so the only ones that would be good for me, really, I mean, duplicates aren't bad anymore, but the only ones that would really be great for me are Albert or Marth. So, fingers crossed right now. 
Is it after this one or is it the next one? I don't know. Let's take a look. Nope, this is a dragon. This is another dragon. What's it can happen? It is Marth! Yo, we just got two Fire Emblem characters! And we haven't even spent that much of our savings. Oh man, gotta check Marth out. This has been a very good summoning session for me so far. Juggernaut. Awesome. So now we're only missing Veronica. Wow. Marth looks so good. I do think he looks kind of short. That did hit me. That it kind of occurred to me. Like something about his pose. I don't know. Something about his pose. I think to me the other characters look the best from the crossover. But he does still look good. He looks good. He's classic. His 3D model looks perfect. I mean, this to me is spot on Marth. This is like what Marth would look like in this game. And I would love to see a Fire Emblem game in that style, honestly. Like, it's kind of a cute style. So, for Marth skills, Flickering Flames, grants him some regen, deals flame damage ahead, Fire Emblem, flame damage in a line. First time you connect with it, you get a 10% personal strength buff for 10 seconds. Second time you connect with it, that extends. That buff is for your whole team. Same buff, but for the whole team. Third time, that buff is for the whole team, plus their attack rate is going to increase as well. And I'm reading the percentages off here. These percentages are at the base level. As you level up Marth and level up this skill to its second level, it has a level two, then those percentages will increase and it'll be what's shown on the banner information that we saw yesterday. So I am super excited to try out Last Boost as well. And look at the icon. They actually show the special symbol from Fire Emblem or Fire Emblem Heroes at least as the icon, which makes so much sense. That actually makes so much sense to use that because that's what this does. It charges all your skills immediately. Stun Res goes up to 100% and Flurry Devastation. I am going to get Levin's Champion and the Shining Overlord and put them on this guy and see how much havoc he can wreak. Wow. Let's take a look at his 3D model and give it a spin. Yeah, it's, it's to me this is like a flawless model of Marth. He looks so good. He looks so good. Wow. All right, everyone, I think I'm gonna have to call it a day for this summoning video. We're gonna get a lot of resources during the rest of the event, so I'm gonna see how much I'm able to save. Maybe we will come back and take our chances as far as Veronica. I might even go for this Platinum Showcase since she's the only one I'm missing. There is a 33% chance that I get her and complete the trilogy. That's not bad. Complete the collection, so if I'm not able to get her, not too bad, can't complain. Got a lot of good adventures. I have my Alphonse already. I would love to, of course, assemble the whole Fire Emblem squad, and I hope that you are able to do that too. Let me know how it's gone for y'all in the comments below. Otherwise, everyone, take care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.